okay, I can do that. Boom! What's up everyone, Mark Lobliner, TigerFitness.com, alongside the Gaines Alliance. Let's start with this guy. That's G-A, Gaines Alliance, pronounced gay. <laughs> the Sean's Low Body High Performance Nutrition. And of course, you all know him, you guys talk shit about him, feel free to comment negatively down below. <laughs> Doug Miller, Core Nutritionals. So anyway, what you're seeing here is actually a videotape version of what we do every single day. We're on tour in Virginia, in Australia, wherever, and this is the Gains Alliance. We do as we go out, we do seminars, we answer questions, and we're actually three CEOs of different companies who come together because we have similar goals, but that's another video. Um, but one thing we always get is people always ask like, what's the secret to this? What's this, what separates the best, the greatest? And the question is, what is the one intangible variable outside of consistency that separates some of the great athletes, not just bodybuilders in general, from the rest of them, from people who just don't get anything? And since he's kind of known for it, I think Doug should lead off because we all answer this the same way in the seminars. Now, Doug, you're known for something with your training, right? Yeah. I mean, so... At the end of the day, you know, most people know how to diet. A macro is a macro. Uh, people know how to count carbs, protein, and fat, you know, at a very even early uh, stage in their, you know, lifting uh, uh, career. But um, it really comes down to training and training intensity. Again, most people for just basic training, people know how to squat, how to deadlift. They know what the basics mm -hmm. are. They know how to generally train and uh, periodize their, pro their programs. Um, but it really comes down to intensity. A lot of people, you see them going through the motions in the gym. Mm -hmm. You know, they're doing a set of, you know, three sets of 10 and they, you know, finish nicely with 10 reps and then they do it, you know, wait 30, uh, 60 seconds and then do another set. Yeah. That's not going to get it done. That's not what's going to separate, you know, the mediocre from the good bodybuilders or people with really great physiques. Um, it comes down to that training intensity when it really starts hurting. I mean, you said this the other day in a seminar, I think it was Arnold who said it, right? It's like when that pain sets in, you know, it's, it's, that's when the set starts and that's when it counts. It's like, how, how far can you push past that, that pain where most people are going to stop that really, um, you know, makes the difference in your physique. And I think all three of us, you know, train that way. And that's one of the reasons why we, we work so well together, because I think it's not just the intensity in the gym, but we apply that to everything. And I think that's what really kind of separates people. I, I absolutely agree. And I've gone over this so many times on this channel and people, I think they, they almost overthink training in that they put all these variables, 62% of your one RM for five reps. And this, I think there's a place for that in powerlifting and periodization and things like that. But, um, as Sean, you, you killed the guy you trained with last night. He puked three times, then he gave up. It happens. And I think, I think, I think people, um, when they train with us and they're like, wow, you know, that was this, it's like, no, that's how we train six days a week, every single week, every single training session, unless we're sick, right. you know, or unless we're, we're going through a phase where we don't really push it. Most of the time we're going hard. Now, Sean, you actually, you put a lot more, you put a lot of thought in your training, but you generally, I mean, your progress has been. The thing is this. If we think about muscle growth uh, as an adaptation to stress, it's what it is. It doesn't happen on accident. You induced it through environmental factors. If your stress is not that great, your results are not going to be that great. You have to be willing to push yourself to extreme levels of discomfort if you want to have a really awesome physique. Yeah, and we're not talking about being stupid and like no. where something hurts and you push through that pain. Yeah, like, it's, it's, it's I tore my ACL. Yeah. Let me you know, go squat. I mean, to, to have a long, I mean, you have to stay healthy in this. I mean, there's always going to be something that hurts and you have to train around, not through injuries. Yeah. But we're talking about the the good pain. Yeah, we're talking about the, the pain burn, that, right? yeah, the, that comes from the, the buildup of lactic acid and the running out of energy, not being able to, you know, to take oxygen in fast enough and that feeling of muscle failure chasing that and embracing it and, and searching for it actively rather than avoiding it and cutting your set off when that kicks in. I mean, in. I think all three of us look for ways to induce that pain. Yeah, oh, I mean, yeah like, we love it. Last night, we, you know, we slept, what, two hours after yeah. doing two seminars in a row, and it was back day. And it, we, we worked all day. We've had a, a four-hour flight, and it was 10 o'clock at night, and it was time to train. And we all looked for ways to you know make ourselves and our training partners who got yeah. to train with us you know, in pain. So, you yeah, know, I, I went, did GBT training. I went max. I went up to, yeah. what was it, 620 or 650, whatever the hell the kilos convert to a deadlift. And then I did three sets of ultra slow deadlifts with 315 along with someone. Because when people come to train with us on these things, they don't want us to be deloading. 
Right. So we can't have a bad workout on these kind of things. And Sean, I don't know what you did, but the guy almost died. Well, I'll tell you what. I mean, I was I was talking to Joe in the back of Spartan Subs, which is the store we were at, and we were both like, "Are you feeling it?" And we we're like, "Nah, not really. Like, I'm not even feeling like really working out right now yeah. uh, because of the time and everything being off and etc." But I just started with volume. We just went in and we were doing sets of 15, 20 reps and we were just going, 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 going. And he wanted to, you know, rest, but there was no time for rest because I just wanted to keep pushing it. And eventually it was almost like I started to pick up intensity and, uh, you know, he wasn't able to match it because it's probably not how he normally trains. Yeah. Uh, and that's the difference what we're talking about. So if you want to get the results that, you know, are looked at as incredible, the amount of work you're going to have to put in in the gym, like you're saying, it's not just the nutrition. Uh, it's not just the, the the way you structure your workouts. All these things are very important and great, but the truly phenomenal results come from that next level of training intensity. Yeah. And I think a lot of people, you know, a lot of it comes from an, an innate part of you, right? Like Athletes you, have a different you, mindset. You're kind of born with that. that. That's a genetic gift is to be able to push to that next level. But I think a lot of it can be taught. You know, by having a good training partner, training with somebody else who has a level. I mean, I think all three of the people that we trained with, Sep, even though your your guy pretty much died, he did die. Twice. I mean, you know, he he pushed himself past the level that he would never do on his own. I know my guy is going to be feeling it for you know three or four days for sure, and your guy I think set a PR, right? Yeah, so he it's set like, a PR in the third set, right? So I mean, it just you know, it's one of set. those things is surround yourself by people that know how to get to that intensity yeah. level. Um, and, and it does come, I mean, but it takes time. I mean, it takes years of, of doing Well, I mean, like if my, my story this week is I wanted to get 315 on bench press with the slingshot for 30 reps. I ended up getting 28. First thing I did is I found Doug. I'm like, Doug, I need you to spot me. Now I didn't need a spot. If you're going for 28 reps, generally you can get it off right. the clock. But I mean, just having someone there who could push that next level, that's a key. But if you don't have that person, motivation is from within. I always get these emails. How do I get motivated? I'm so not motivated. I can't get to the gym. I'm like, I can't help you. Mm -hmm. That motivation is from within. However, to take it to that next level, having someone like these guys around, it does help tremendously. And that's why I want to invite you. Keep an eye out on our social media, all three of us, because we have a lot of these things coming up. That We do a lot of these things, a lot of these workouts. In Ohio, I do them all the time. And come join us, you know? And just being around that kind of atmosphere will, will help take it to that next level. Because I guarantee you, everyone we trained with in the past, you know, in the past week, their training level is going to be at a level they've probably never seen before because they witness what it takes. They witnessed me after that bench press. I don't know on my fan page on Facebook I posted it, but I was literally laid up like this against the best. I couldn't move. And I think you need to kind of see what it takes. Like watching um, Harrison from the Steelers doing his training. That's insane. That gets me pumped up. That's one thing that I'll say is that a lot of times you look at certain people like, like Doug, like Mark, like maybe like Mike Rashid. And it's not the movements that they did. It's not the fact that they did bench press or deadlift or squat or whatever. And, and it's not just the food that they ate. It's not the, just certain supplements. It's the way that they do things. It's the approach to things. It's that ability like we've been talking about here to go to that next level. It wasn't the fact that they, they benched. because And it wasn't the amount of weight that they used. No. That's totally individual. What Doug uses to achieve you know, that that intensity with the deadlift you might do it with 135 or with 225 or with 315 or with anything in between it's just that next level of unlocking what you're capable of just so we get out the way i think i think we explained that pretty thoroughly train fucking hard if you want to get those results it's it's unlocking a level that you might not have known was there before and doug where can they find you what's your youtube doug has a youtube channel it's d-a-m-225 d-a-m-225 Yes, sir. And that um, he also has another channel, it's SUS250. <laughs> that took a second. <laughs> uh, Sean, where can they find you? It's that forward slash rich homie Sean. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for watching. The Gaines Alliance um, may be coming to a town near you. I know we got some trips in the U.S. plan. Um, we'll be at Body Power. Doug can't make it because he actually loves his family. And, uh, <laughs> and wants to spend time with them. Weird as fuck. <laughs> Why? <laughs> That's not a game. Boom!